Welcome to the lecture on Robotic Operating System, part one, for RSD. So to start off, in computing, we develop and run software on platforms. This could be directly on hardware, on the operating system, in some application, or some other underlying software. For example, we can run a program on our Windows operating system. Also, we can run software directly on the hardware of an embedded system. We can run Java applications on the Java platform, which runs on our computer. For robotics, we could just use an operating system or an embedded system to write software to perform robotic operations. However, in modern robotics, this limits us and also can take a lot of time for development. Robots may have multiple computers that may need to work together. We're likely to use complex algorithms that, if we were to write them from scratch, would take a lot of time. Furthermore, our robots have a vast array of sensors and actuators that we would need a lot of expertise and knowledge to know how to interface with them. So a robotic software platform gives us tools to develop robotic application programs such as low-level control, sensing, navigation, simulation and so on. Further, by using a software platform we can create hardware abstraction meaning that we can write directly to the hardware without understanding the details and complexities of every single sensor and actuator that is manufactured. There are many, many robotic software platforms available. The major ones include OROCOS, OpenRTM, OPROS, and the one that we'll be looking at which is ROS, or Robotic Operating System. So, as I said, we'll be looking at ROS, which is Robotic Operating System, and ROS can be broken up into plumbing, tools, capabilities, and ecosystem, as shown on the slide. The plumbing is the communication infrastructure that ROS provides at its lowest level. This allows different functions, processes, computers and robots to communicate with each other. Further, this promotes reusability and modular design by dividing processes into their minimal functions that can communicate with the larger system. This communication infrastructure also aids in the networking of multiple computers and robots without need to worry about the hardware. The message system has been built over years and so there's a good standardization of the message formats which makes it easy and allows you to develop and your development to fit in with the existing ROS ecosystem. So looking at tools, the tools provided by ROS include a bunch of command line tools which will allow you to inspect data, um, inspect communication, run processes, record data, a whole bunch of things that we'll look at a little bit later. But also ROS provides a very well-known tool called RVIS. Now this tool allows you to view your robot and also the sensor data that that robot is collecting in a 3D environment. This basically allows you to see what the robot sees and it'll allow you to pick up problems very quickly and easily. Another tool that's provided by Ross is RQT which is a framework for developing graphical interfaces. So it has a bunch of plugins as well, which allow you to view the communications, data storing, it allows you to plot graphs, and so on. And we'll look at these in detail a lot later. 
ROS provides a standard format to describe your robot known as URDF or Unified Robot Description Format which is an XML document that describes all the physical properties which can be used for describing and modeling. ROS provides diagnostics so that you can deal with issues when they arise and ROS provides packages that allow you to rapidly put together pose estimation, localization, and navigation, which we'll be looking at in our labs. Furthermore, we've got our ecosystem here. So ROS has a very large and vibrant community. Its wiki, which you'll probably refer to quite a bit if you use ROS, has over 22,000 pages and it has a very active question and answer forum. There are over 5,000 packages that have been voluntarily shared and developed by the community. This ecosystem allows the user to be part of the discussion of the advancement of robotics. The other thing that's good about ROS is ROS has a very permissive licensing scheme, which is the standard three cores BSD license, which allows reuse in commercial and closed source products. However, saying this, um, be aware that in some of the community packages, they will have different licenses, and so you need to check in these cases. So, I'm not going to go too much into the history, but ROS was started in 2007 by a US robot company known as Willow Garage, which is a well-known company in the field of robotics. In 2010, the first release of ROS, so ROS 1.0, was released. From there, multiple releases have come out, um, with the most recent being Melodic Marina, um, and this is only in 2018 uh, in May. Now, you can see on this slide here that the naming scheme for the releases follows the alphabet. Okay, so you can see Box Turtle, Sea Turtle, Diamondback, and so on. And it's also, you can see the inclusion of the turtle in the name and also the little logo for each one which you will see later. Um, I'm not going to go into why. Um, you can read up on that if you're interested in the history. Um, you'll also note that Kinetic is the one that is recommended to use. Um, and this is just due to it being stable and reliable. And so this is what we're going to be using. And it has an end of life date of 2021, so it's still going to be useful for a very long time. So, the thing that's confusing about ROS, um, especially when you see the name, is that the name of ROS is Robotic Operating System. However, it's not really an operating system as you know it. And what it is referred to is a meta operating system. So this means that it's installed on top of an operating system or on an operating system, which for our case is going to be Linux. This means that you will have access to all the tools and features provided by Linux. And then also on top of that, the functions and tools provided by ROS, which include the scheduling, loading, monitoring, and error handling for our robotic application programs. Now, it's often convenient to use a graph to show processes and messages and their communications. Um, and this is a really nice way and a useful way to describe a ROS system. So you can see that ROS is made up of different process communi communicating with each other at the same time. We can see that ROS is a peer-to-peer -peer network of processes, and this could be across multiple machines. 
and that they're loosely coupled. So this means that the task that we're trying to achieve can be made into many subsystems. So for example, we could have navigation as one subsystem, uh, computer vision as another subsystem, actuating something as another subsystem, and so on. What this means is that these subsystems are not locked into one task. So for example, if we've got some process that deals with navigation, it will work for both a security robot and a cleaning robot. This means if designed properly, okay, the vast majority of the application software can run on any robot. Some of it, the lower level stuff, won't, but a lot of it will. So the next part of this lecture is just looking at installing ROS. Um, it's not too much about the technical details, but just so if you want to use it, you know how to get it and you can have a play around with it. So the first thing is that we will be using Ubuntu um, and I recommend using Ubuntu too. Uh, you'll need to use version 16.04, okay? And you can download that for free, okay? So you can get the ISO. Um, just by following the URL on the slides. Now, I highly doubt that most people want to change their operating system on their laptop or their home PC. Um, and so you will unlikely want to install Ubuntu directly onto your own personal computer. So what you can do instead is install a virtual machine so you can download some software called VirtualBox and that's also free that will allow you to run Linux as a guest operating system. Now whilst this works just keep in mind that it may be a bit slower or it's not as easy to install some of the drivers um, compared to if it was the host but it's good enough for your testing and it's what we'll be doing in the labs. So then we're going to look at installing. So the first thing is that we need to just open up a terminal in uh, Linux and we're going to write a bit of uh, a couple of commands. So the first line here, we are going to get the source list, uh, basically just copy and paste that and run that. The second line we need to add a public key to download the pub packages. Now, what I've noticed about this is it may be blocked by a firewall if you're on an enterprise network, such as the university's network. So if you're planning on doing this, just jump on another network um, to do this step. Um, the next step, whilst it's not required, it's a good idea to up update and upgrade um, everything in Linux before installing. The next line is actually installing ROS. So you can see that we're installing ROS Kinetic for the desktop and we're installing the full um, installation. Now this might take a little bit of time. Then I've recommended that you install RQT, we're going to be using that quite a bit and it's a handy tool. After this, um, we're going to initialize ROSDEP. Okay, so you can see that there you've got ROSDEP in it and then ROSDEP update. Um, basically, this is a feature that will install dependent packages when using core components of ROS, so it's kind of handy. Then we're going to install ROS install which is below that, and this is just another useful tool that will be helpful. And then at the end, you need to load the environment settings file. We're going to have a look at that shortly. Um, just write what's there, okay? So the next thing that we need to look at is finding our 
IP address. And this is necessary um, for running ROS on the network. Um, we're going to be connecting to our robots using Wi-Fi. And so we do need to find our IP address and set our IP address for each um, computer or robot in our system. So we need to work out how to find our IP address. Um, basically, you'll also need to do this every time um, you connect to a network if your IP is dynamically assigned. So this is actually the case with the Latrobe network. So if you're at Latrobe, you're going to be doing this step quite often. So to find your IP address in Linux, just open up a terminal and type if config as shown here. And you'll see a bunch of information come up and you should see the inet address. And this is your IP address. Now you'll notice that on the slides, um, this is an ethernet connection. If you're using Wi-Fi, um, it should be under uh, wireless LAN zero or something similar. You'll be able to find which one, um, there shouldn't be too many um, based on what you're connected to. Okay, so what's connected to the internet. Um, from there, we then are going to act, um, edit our bashrc file. Um, basically, bashrc is a script that runs every time you open a new terminal. Okay, so if you open a terminal, this runs. And for ROS, basically, we need to run particular commands every time we open a new terminal. So we're going to open this file up. Um, you can use whatever editor you like. Um, you can use Vim if you prefer. Um, but if you've got a monitor, uh, you can use gedit. So it's graphic edit. And open up your bashrc file. So you can see on the slides, you'll need to add lines 120 and 121. Okay. And that just sets um, particular locations. And then you'll see lines 123 and 124. You'll also need to add these lines, um, except for replacing the IP address that's there with your own IP address. Okay. And we'll come back to this file later because we will need to make some changes and also edit this file on our robot. Okay, once you've done that, make sure to save. And then once you're back into the terminal, just type source and then you'll bash RC. The last thing we're going to look at in this lecture is just the Catkin workspace. So we're going to set up a workspace. So this is where your code and stuff will go and your packages when we get there. So Catkin is the ROS build system. So this is a set of tools that ROS uses to generate executable programs, libraries, scripts, and interfaces that other code can use. Now Catkin uses CMake and CMake is a cross-platform open source software application for managing the build process of software. Okay. And it does that using a compiler independent method. Now CMake is commonly used for open source build systems. To use this, you will need to create and initialize a Catkin workspace folder. And to do that, you need to create a folder using mkdir. You then need to go into that folder using cd. And then you type the command catkin int init, sorry, uh, workspace. And that will initialize it. This only needs to be once, um, unless you end up creating a new workspace folder. Um, you should only need to do this once. All right, so in this lecture, we looked at the basics of a robotics software platform. Uh, we looked at why we use ROS 
and we looked at the basic install method. In the next lecture, we'll look at message communication um, and how ROS works.